Hey everyone, I'm Liam Kavanaugh. I am the Group Product Manager for Azure Cognitive Search. And uh, I'm going to leave this up for a couple of minutes in case anyone wants to take a picture to be able to reproduce anything I'm showing or try out the demos or whatever it might be. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds and then we'll swap over. So I don't know how I follow that demo. It was, it was pretty impressive. But uh, let me see, see if I can... Uh, See if I can kind of expand on what Derek and David did. So Derek and David showed the power of Azure OpenAI. He, they walked through all the things that you can do with many of the things that you can do with prompts to really build out these chat GPT experience for, for your organizations. But what we found is that quite often it's not enough to just use the, the ChatGPT model because the ChatGPT model is trained based on public data. Right? But we have organizations, we have our own data, we have our own PDF, office documents, data sitting in our own repository that hasn't been trained, it hasn't been put into the knowledge of the ChatGPT model. But what if we could actually use the power of ChatGPT, that whole experience, that whole interaction that Derek and David were showing, but allow you to do that over your data? So that if some of your users ask question, you can limit it to what is in your corpus of content. And that is exactly what I want to show you today, is how you can do that using a combination of Azure OpenAI as well as Azure Cognizant Search. So all those links that I gave you, you can fully reproduce everything I'm going to show you today. Um, you can even start using it over your data if you, if you want to do so. So let me set, set up the, the stage of what, what I want to show. So imagine there's a, a company called Contoso Electronics fake company, and what they want to do is they want to build an experience, an HR experience, so that employees can come and ask questions about uh, the employee handbook. Or you can see here, they have many different health plans that they have available that they, the customer or user might want to ask questions about. And in fact, even if you look at this content, like there's 104 pages of content that has been created here that talks about this specific plan. So not only is it a large amount of content, but some of this content is really large. Oh, by the way, fun fact, Azure OpenAI completely made this whole corpus. It was amazing how effective it was in creating a 105-page document of plans, and it is like really, really good. So that was kind of fun, fun side effect. But let's say that that is the content that we want to use. And the way that we're doing this is we're using something called um, the RAG pattern. You might have heard this in the keynotes and some other areas, but this is retrieval augmented generation. And what that means is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out this chat experience and it's going to use Azure Cognitive Search's ability to retrieve really relevant information from your corpus of content. It allows you to use natural language to be able to find potentially relevant chunks of text that might be useful. And then what we do is we then augment that prompt, those prompts that David and Derek were showing, and we're saying, hey, we're gonna create a prompt. We're, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide you some potential snippets of text. I want you, Azure OpenAI, to answer that question based on what I'm giving you. And that allows us to reduce the chance of these GPT models making things up or trying to use data that's not applicable to us. It allows us to keep that boundary to what is important in our data. So let me show you this demo. And I'm gonna walk through a couple of examples just so you can see this. So if we can see here, sorry about the screen being shrunk in a little bit small. I'm gonna say, does my plan cover I exams, right? So this is just a chat experience, slightly different look than the Clippy one. I actually like the Clippy one. I think I need to change to that one as much. But both, both are very effective ones. But you'll notice here that it answered that question for me in the best way it could, right? We see that there's two plans at this company. You know, obviously ChatGPT wouldn't have known about that. But because of the corpus, it has that content. It was able to try to get, you know, a little bit of an answer. But let's look in a little bit more detail as to what's happening and how did it do that. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm actually clicking on this citation because that's really important from what we've found when we work with companies that you know, ChatGPT, if it doesn't know, sometimes it will try to make things up. So if we modify our prompts so that it, it focuses on that content and actually directs that to them, you can see here, 
we can actually see it actually links me to a page that actually tells me about these comparisons, which is pretty good, right? But if we step back and see how this is all done using the rag pattern, the first step that happens is we take that question and we say, okay, I'm gonna send that off to Azure Cognitive Search, which is searching over all the contents that's been indexed, and we're finding a bunch of different potential sections. So in this document, this one right here, we think this might be a relevant snippet or chunk. This one might be relevant, and we get the top ones based on what we think is the most relevant. Now obviously this is like more like a traditional search interface where we give a bunch of different responses, but that's not what we want in chat. We want somehow like, I want you to actually answer that. And so what we do, keep in mind, remember what you just saw from Derek and David about the prompts, is that what we're doing is we're giving it a description instead of saying it's clippy. You know, we're gonna tell you we're an assistant, you're trying to answer healthcare qu questions. Um, and I'm going to provide you some sources. I'm gonna provide you within that prompt some text that you can possibly take that answer from. And when you do that, I want you to actually respond back with citations, put them in square brackets, as you can see here, so we can actually link them to it. And here is all the sources that we just saw in that last tab. So the first step is Cognitive Search, bringing that content in, injecting it, allowing OpenAI to use its chat GPT-ness to be able to respond to it. And the great part is that, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, that's great that I, it answers uh, that, but I actually have, uh, you know, yeah, I have standard, right? And I'll actually ask that question. So you'll notice that it, it actually answered the question, but it answered it in context to my original question, and that's, that's allowing me to continue on with that chat experience. So it's great I'm asking about standard, but I need to go back into that memory that's continually being applied to this. So that's one of the things that we can do with this, but I wanna show you a couple of other interesting things. So I'm gonna clear the chat, and I'm gonna click here on what happens in a performance review. And it's going to go out and it's gonna give me an answer to it of like how uh, performance reviews, connects, whatever happen in this company. I wanna ask, does anyone want to throw at a, a language that you speak that's not English? Dutch, I haven't done this one. All right, this is gonna be a good test. So what I'm gonna do, I always love going off the, uh, off the script a bit. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to put this in and I'm gonna do a conversion to Dutch. First of all, does that look correct? Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, this, is, this demo's going off the rails quick. Okay. All right. Very well done. <laughs> I think I need that beer now. All right. So let me, let me paste this in now, and I'm going to paste in this question, which I'm hoping is the exact same. Oh. What, did it, what does that say? Do you know? Oh, interesting. Ah, I went off the rails there. Okay, <laughs> let's try a different language and see what happens with that. Interesting, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to look at that Dutch one. Thank, thank you for that. But for those of you that may speak Spanish, you'll, you'll, hopefully you'll see that this is an actual, you know, the same answer that it, it had from above but it's converted into Spanish. And then there's no Spanish content or Dutch content in my context. So you might be asking like, well, how did it do that? And the answer is, and then keep in mind, I provided you the link. If I look at how our prompts work, I'm gonna go through, and this is the code behind it in the GitHub repository. And you'll notice here, there's like one sentence in here, which says, if the question is not in English, I want you to translate it to English and then execute and generate the search query, which is, I think, pretty interesting. So I didn't do anything from a multi-language perspective. I just made it, added to the prompt a little bit more context on what it might want to do. And not only did it translate it so that I could search it and find the snippets, but 
it was smart enough to say, you know what, when I respond back, I'm gonna actually take that English response and convert it into Spanish. Hopefully it would have worked for Dutch, but you know, that, that allows me to do it. And that's one of the things that we can apply here. I wanna show you a couple other interesting things. So I'm gonna clear the chat here. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, well, instead of saying, what does a product manager do? I'm gonna click on these developer settings here. And uh, I was gonna try to see if I could add Clippy in here, but I'm just gonna put in here, answer like a pirate, right? So this is just about adding to the prompt, right? Like it's just modifying the prompt in different ways so that you can access it and actually have it interact in, a, in one way or another. So I'm gonna close that and I'm going to just click on this, what does a product manager do? And let's see what happens here. You can see here, our, you know, it's, it's doing his best job to pretend it's to be a, being a pirate, which is not, you know, probably not something you, you necessarily want to do in your organization, but hopefully you can start thinking about the different ways that you can use this for your different workflows. Like maybe what you want to do is people are actually asking these questions and rather than bringing it back in a, a text, like wouldn't it be great if I can say, hey, please respond back at, in a, a format of a table, you know? And actually, I'm going to even try this. Let's see what say is say. Please show me this as an HTML table, right? Let's see, see if this works. And what it'll do is it'll, it should, you know, it actually answers this, but it actually formats in a different way. This time I actually had to ask the user, the, as a user to actually put it in a, a good format, but you can imagine maybe adding this to the prompt to be able to make it more interactive and more useful for the user. And one final thing, uh, in the demo I wanted to show you is I want to show you this example that I, I think is really effective. Um, my notepad is right here. So I think I'm just going to copy this, this sentence instead of typing it for time. I'll clear the chat and show you this. What does an employee pay per paycheck for the standard plan? which doesn't seem like it's that, uh, oh, I had the pirate in there too, but you know, <laughs> should have taken that off. But you know, it answered this question, which in itself doesn't look that interesting. However, when I actually look at the, the link to this, the citation, you'll notice that it actually got that from a table. That has been really, really hard to do in the past from search because before, you know, it, search was good at being able to find words and saying, okay, here's the text in it. But many times our content or our answers are not in a, a paragraph. They might be in databases. They might be in a table where the answer has to go, I have to go through this column and this row to get that cell value. And the reason why we can do this is because, once again, Azure OpenAI is really, really good at understanding things such as tables which makes sense. It's been trained on the web. There's a lot of tables in there, so it's only natural that it's gonna know how to interact with those and actually use them in interesting ways. So hopefully I've shown you a couple of ways where you can use all this great stuff that David and Derek showed through the prompts, as well as with Azure Cognizant Search, but do this and allow you to do it over your content. So with that, I'll pass it on.